Alright, so in this video I'm going to have a look at this floppy disk drive here. It was given to me just a few days ago, and the previous owner said it's not working as it should, and because of that he might just as well give it to me, because he's not in any need of it anymore. And uh, I think that uh, there is a pretty big chance that this floppy disk drive can be repaired, because according to the previous owner, this floppy drive um, detects all disks as being write protected, even though they're not. So um, let me turn on the power here. Now um, this disk is uh, not write protected so I put that in there. I have a workbench on uh, this disk so there we are. Now the beauty with uh, an Amiga 12, this is a working Amiga 1200 motherboard by the way. So this motherboard is working perfectly fine, no problems there. And the beauty with Amiga 1200 and many other Amigas as well um, is, but, but not with Amiga 500 for example, but the Amiga 1200 you can connect uh, an external drive here and then go into the early boot uh, menu, uh, early startup menu and then choose to boot from DF1. Uh, so even if this drive wouldn't load anything at all, let's say it was totally misaligned or something like that, you can still boot into um, um, workbench really easily by just booting from DF1 or well you can use a hard disk also of course but uh, if you just have a setup like this on your uh, repair bench then you can just hook up a, uh, an external drive and boot from that using the, um, the early boot up menu really convenient um, little thing that you can boot from DF1 on uh, and Amiga 1200 so I'm going into uh, the drive test program here that I have on this disk so let's see, uh, drive test, here we go, there we have it, okay. So I can boot this, I can load this drive tester program from the drive that I'm actually testing. Uh, I don't need to connect uh, DF1, an external drive here, just to boot this program. Uh, so uh, let's see, let's try a few things here. So. Uh, First of all, and when these indicators are blue here, uh, that means that uh, the signal is high, and uh, when it's gray, uh, then the signal is low on the floppy disk drive interface. But, um, okay, what I'm gonna do now is just turn off the motor by driving this high, and then I will select DFO there, okay. And uh, now let's see, if I turn on the motor, uh, the ready signal should go low. Yep, that works fine. Let's see if I can step the heads. No problem. And if I step enough, I should get to track zero, and then this uh, indicator should light up. So let's do that because this is di the direction to the lower tracks. Here is the direction to the higher tracks. So let's continue going to the lower tracks. And it is actually stepping on the rising edge here. So here it's high, here it's low, and there it steps. So the signal is high, and then I press it, it goes low, and then I press it again, and then there it steps. It may, you, I guess you can even hear it. I mean, if you listen carefully, here, there, step, 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 and so on. But of course this pulse, this step pulse is extremely narrow. It's really a short uh, step pulse uh, when the Amiga floppy controller is generating that step. But anyway, uh, let's see if we can get to track zero here, if that works. So let's see if the zero Check zero detection signal if, uh, if that is working on this floppy drive. Oh, come on. Oh, there, yep. And when it uh, has reached track zero, it shouldn't be possible to step it to any lower tracks because that is a kind of protection circuit in uh, the floppy drive. The, uh, usually these uh, three and a half inch floppy drives works like that. They have, um, um, they have a protection circuit built in kind of. So if I press step here, it won't step anymore. 
because if it would do that then the heads would just slam into the metal here so that's kind of a protection thing in uh, the drive but if I change direction here it will start stepping into uh, this direction again like this um, so okay let's go back to track zero yep there we have it and track one track two one zero one two okay that works uh, now let's see uh, outside I cannot really test that without using an oscilloscope but okay uh, what more yeah okay let's check these right protection and change uh, signals uh, and the oh, previous owner said that the right protection is not really working so I need to test that by well first of all I want to uh, I think I should turn off the motor here so let's do like that I, uh, I turn off the motor by pulling this high first and then pulling the select low like that um, it's the same thing if you wanna uh, start the motor you have to pull it low here the motor low and then select low uh, but okay let's turn it off there okay and uh, now while select the, the drive is selected by having this pulled low having the signal low there uh, I can now just uh, just take the disk out of the drive and we'll see what happens here hmm well the right protection seems to work but the change signal Hmm. When I take out the disc, this should uh, latch low to indicate that the disc is out. But it didn't do that. Let's try this again. I put the disc in and out. Okay, in, out, in with the disc and out with the disc. And hmm. Well, the right protection works because if I now if I write, this is not write protected, okay, but if I write protected, then, let's see, okay, now it's write protected. So if I put that in, nothing happens with the write protection signal there. And that is really as expected. So let me put it back like that. So now it's not write protected. Yeah, that works fine. Okay, but uh, change the change signal, change disk signal. Hmm. Now let's go in here and have a look. Let's have a look here. Okay, now we have the right protect sensor here. And let's see here. Here is the right protect sensor, and the disk change sensor will be this one here so if I now press the right protect sensor down here we should be able to see a response on screen and indeed we do here I'm pressing it down like that and I'm releasing it down up down up and so on. Okay, that works fine. And of course, I cannot do this while the drive is deselected like that. That won't work because if I press it down now, it down up, down up, down right. You know, it doesn't work. So the drive has to be selected like that. And then I can test this by pressing that uh, sensor down and up and down and up. Uh, so that seems to work fine. Now, um, what about the change? Um, sensor, disk change sensor. So let's see if I can uh, access that sensor here. Push it down like that. And uh, oops, wrong, wrong one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. That one. And nothing has, oh yeah, that's right. And that, uh, it doesn't work. Uh, because I had to, I had to do a step because this change uh, signal it's uh, latching when a step is being performed so I need to put a disc in here like that and then when I step it should 
this change signal should latch low. Let's see. Hmm. Or, hmm, well, that doesn't work. If I press down that sensor again. Ah, okay, there I got it to release. Okay, so when the disk is out, then it's uh, low. Then it's latched low, but then I put a disk in and I, so now it's not, um, now it's not, it's not latched high, but when I step like that, then it's latched high. Uh, so, okay, and now I, when I take the disk out, it should latch low, which indicates, uh, this should latch low, which indicates that the disk is out, so, and there's, uh, it actually worked there, but it was a bit late, so I think maybe that uh, sensor is a bit intermittent or something like that. So let's try again. And let's step a bit here. Okay, now when I take it out. Nope, now it's not changing. So it's still stuck there. So maybe that uh, disk change sensor is intermittent or something like that. If I touch it here with my pair of tweezers. Let me touch that and take a look here. Okay. Okay, and there I got it to release that uh, latched and uh, make it go low again, which indicates that it's uh, that the disk is out of the uh, drive. So, uh, okay. Hmm. Um, I think it's intermittent, but uh, or maybe I don't know because if it's intermittent, then you know it sh should still latch low when I take up, uh, the disk out because if it was intermittent then it there would be a problem pushing it down so it wouldn't de detect the disk when the disk is inserted but this is a problem you know the problem is when the disk is taken out so I think that this pin here it just doesn't it doesn't want to spring back up enough for it to release that that latch and I think that's the problem so there's more like a mechanical problem with the spring here that is pu um, pushing up this uh, pin uh, because if I now now it's it hasn't detected that the disc is up if I pull this up with my pair of tweezers here I grab it with my pair of tweezers and I pull it hmm I'm not really sure Ah, now I get it. These two switches are, of course, normally closed, momentary push switches. I thought they were uh, normally open first, but um, I think they're normally closed, which means that when they're being pushed down, they are uh, uh, open, and when they are released, they are closed. So um, uh, that means, of course, that uh, there might be uh, some kind of intermittent problem on that um, uh, disk change switch there, which is this one, the inner one there, because when it's pushed down, well, it's uh, uh, open, and when it's about to close, well, it doesn't close properly because it's intermittent. So maybe I can fix that somehow with some contact spray or something like that. In the worst case, I will have to replace uh, the whole switch, try to find a donor uh, for it, maybe a PC floppy disk drive or something, I can find a switch from, take a switch from there, I don't know. Now before contact spraying that switch, I thought I could show you here what kind of symptoms this kind of uh, fault will uh, give you. So here I just uh, turned on the power and now the screen is black here because uh, there's no hard drive connected so we have to wait for a few seconds. But uh, the disk is not in the drive as you can see and uh, we'll see what happens. So what will happen here is that, well, uh, it thinks that there is a disk in there because there's a problem with that switch. So uh, it will uh, take it as a disk in is in the drive and see, it tried to read the disk, even though the disk is not in there, but, but it tried to read something from a disk that it thinks is in there. But here we are getting to the kickstart screen and if I put in well nothing happens because it still thinks you know 
doesn't matter what I do, it's, uh, it still thinks that a disk is inserted all the time. It cannot detect this. So, it thinks that there is a disk in there that could not be uh, read. So, that's why we got back to the kickstart screen and that's just what happens. Um, so, if I turn, on, uh, turn off the power, I put a disk in there with, uh, and turn on the power again and then, of course, when we get to the kickstart screen, it will start reading, or we will not get to the kickstart screen, it will just start reading the disk. Um, because, uh, well, it thinks there is a disk in there, and there is a disk in there, uh, so it will start reading the disk and load into Workbench and all that stuff, so that's what's gonna happen. And we can see that right now, I think in just a few seconds. Yeah. Okay, so we have now booted into Workbench and uh, I can of course click on that disk and read back the content without any problems. But what happens if I try to remove the disk from the floppy drive? Well, let's see. Okay, so that icon is still there, which means uh, that it cannot detect that the disk is out. And if I try to click on it, like this, well... It tries to read the disk, but it cannot because the disk is not there, and it just responds with a read error, and if I press if I push the disk in there like that and press retry, it works again. So, uh, well, that is the symptom uh, that this kind of fault will give you. Okay, so I'm back here again a while later and I have now put some contact spray on both of these two switches. I thought I might just as well do it on both of them while I'm at it. And uh, also I cleaned up with a little bit of alcohol afterwards because I don't want there to be any contact spray left here on the pins and the surrounding area uh, because that might mess down the discs here in this area when I put them in there. So I cleaned up with a little bit of alcohol and here I have the disk drive connected again to my motherboard and here is the kickstart screen and if I now put the disk in here, oh, we can see the heads uh, clicking there or stepping. Uh, well, let's see. Yep, there. Uh, so uh, let's put in a disk here. And it works fine. Okay, so we're now back in Workbench again. And of course, just like before, I can click on this disk icon and read back the contents of this disk without any problems. Now let's see what happens if I remove the disk here. Okay, so that icon is still there. Yeah, okay, I didn't think about that earlier, but um, since this is the system disk, that icon will still be there, even though the disk is um, uh, already taken out from the floppy drive. But uh, in any other case, you know, in a normal situation when this is not the system disk, then um, the icon will disappear when the disk is taken out from uh, the floppy drive. So, I just didn't think about that this is uh, the system disk, but anyway, uh, let's put the disk back in there. And uh, let's go to this program again. Let's see here, okay, drive test. Alright, now, let's see. Okay. Uh, let's do like this. Okay. Aha! Uh -huh. And step. And there it latches there. And the disc out. Aha! Uh -huh. See? It works. Alright. Floppy disk drive, repair complete, and successful. <laughs> Alright, 
So that's it for this uh, floppy disk drive repair video. Alright, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you later.